Hello everybody, welcome to a wild well-being session. My name is James and I teach people, well kids, about nature and the outdoors. But of course, I can't teach you much about the outdoors from a classroom, so I have to come out into the woods. And it's fantastic to come out into the woods and learn about nature and all the wild things around us. And wherever you're watching this, there are wild places near you. They might not be as green, but there are certainly wild spaces where animals and bugs love to live. Now in this activity, we are gonna go into the mind of a bug. We're gonna become the bug and transfer our brain into its consciousness and see what life is like when you're in miniature. I've got some cool stuff here that I wanna show you. This is my bug hunting equipment. Now I've got a proper bug hunting pot here, which is really good. You can put the bug inside it and look at it through the mirror and see its underside or look through this magnifying lens here. But you don't need really cool equipment to hunt for bugs. You can use something like this, which will cost you nothing. Get a plastic tub and a paintbrush. The paintbrush is to pick the bug up because when we use our hands, we can squash the bug and hurt it. And we need to be gentle when we're handling other creatures. That's important because we don't want to do them any harm. So we can use a pot here and the brush. And when we pick up the bug, we're just gonna push it in like that into the pot and we can be gentle with it. The brushes don't hurt it. And then we can look closely at the bug. A magnifying glass can be good as well because it means you can look closer. So if you can get hold of one, that's a really good piece of kit, but it's not essential. I've also got some field guides and an identification book here. So we can look at all the different wonderful bugs that we might find when we're out in the woods or even on the beach. But you don't need these, you could use the internet of course. There's so much information on there. As long as you've got access to a phone when you're out and about, you can get online and look for pictures of the bugs which match what you found. Now let me ask you, where's a good place to find bugs? Well, the best place I know is under things. So under an old log, under some rocks, maybe under a plant pot. Bugs love it where it's a little bit dark and a little bit cooler, where they can get out of the glare of the sun. Let's have a look under this log. Old dead logs are great places to find bugs. Oh, wow, look at that centipede. Oh, he's so fast, he's gone already. There's a woodlouse here. I'm gonna use my paintbrush to gently just flick him into the pot. There he is. That is a good find. He's in the corner. There's another one here, actually. Let's see if we can get him. Use our paintbrush just to flick him. There he goes, inside. Here's our wood lice. One of them has started to curl up. Oh, now he's flailing his legs everywhere. I say he, could be a she. Now wood lice, wood lice mothers, actually carry their babies on the underside of their legs. And wood lice, eat wood. They munch it all up and it starts to rot and eventually that wood turns into soil. So they're really important. Without insects like wood lice, we wouldn't have all the soil to grow all our food in. So that's another reason to empathize with them. They're vital to the survival of this planet. This is a centipede. It's a hunter. It eats other bugs. I don't think it's gonna eat these wood lice though. All it's interested in now is getting to somewhere safe and dark where it can hide because it probably thinks I want to eat it. We'll put him back. And remember we always put the home back when we're done with it. Back for the bugs. But what does hunting for bugs have to do with our well-being? Remember at the start of this video we called this a wild well-being session. Well looking for bugs forces us to slow down to take notice and pay attention to the details around us and nature's fantastic for doing this. When we slow down and take notice, we start to see all these details we didn't notice before. A little flower that's suddenly grown between a gap of rocks that we would normally run past. Some ants that have made a new nest. The tracks of an animal or the nut shells where another animal has been feeding on those nuts. There's so much to see once we start looking. And hunting for bugs and other creatures also helps us to understand them and to have empathy for them. And empathy is the ability to understand the feelings of another living being, whether it's a person 
like your best friend or a family member, or another person in your class, or a creature like an ant, a bird, or a woodlouse. And now we're going to shrink ourselves down to the size of a bug. And here we are, down at ground level, getting a bug's eye view of the world. What I want you to do is to find a place that's really interesting. Somewhere that's got lots of ups and downs, maybe wet and dry places, dark and light places. Somewhere that's got lots of plants or rocks. And we're gonna put our brains inside the brains of a bug. It could be an ant, a ladybird, a worm. You choose what you want it to be. And our bug is gonna go on a journey. Get a piece of string about a meter long and lay it down from one end of your wild space all the way to the other. And you, as a bug, are gonna go on an adventure. And I want you to tell a story with that adventure. Why are you going on this adventure? What do these features now become? Is this rock now a mountain? Is this moss now a forest? Is a puddle now a vast sea to be crossed? And with this story, you're gonna feel lots of different emotions as a bug as you empathize with it. You might feel scared about the things you might find, worried about other predators, other bugs that might want to eat you. You might feel happy because you're going to visit family. It's up to you, it's your story. And when you've told your story, I want you to record it. And there's lots of ways you could do this, you decide. You could write it down, you could draw a picture of the story, you can make a map of the area where your little bug crossed. You can make a video about it. And I also want you to write down three feelings that you felt when you empathised with the bug. Did you feel happy, sad, scared, worried, excited? And we're going to share these stories together. And what this activity teaches us is to have empathy for other living things, no matter how small they are. It teaches us to slow down, pay attention, and take notice of all the details and other life going on around us. Good luck with your stories. I can't wait to hear them.